you just awaken your leader. Yo ho ho sha! What is up, Joe Crew? It is me, Joku DMD, and today I got a deck profile for Zoro Judo. So I saw Azeroth post a pure rush list on this and I thought that list was awesome. I saw a couple lists that topped, so I put my own thoughts on it and put a list together that I thought is pretty fun and I've been enjoying playing it, so I wanna share it with you guys here today. If you enjoy this content and you wanna see more, think about pushing that subscription button, it really helps me out. Thank you so much and let's get into this deck profile. All right, to start out, let's talk about this leader. So this leader is basically Dawn X1. He gives all your character cards plus 1,000. There's a lot of cards that synergize really well with this. There's also another, uh, alternate alternate art that came out in the one piece meet the one piece so i got this uh the awakened version when things get really hot and heavy you can flip your leader over and awaken to the zoro judo go with the samurai zoro look uh i think these alternate art leaders are so insanely cool so i couldn't do the deck profile until i had one of these um so this is the leader play straw hat stuff and just kind of turn stuff sideways so i'm running four nami's nami is kind of essential she's a pay one search top five and zoro actually makes her kind of like a relevant swing because she becomes a 3k with the leader's effect so you can actually turn her sideways into stuff she's good for taking out searchers and she's great to just on play and search something so nami is essential i think this is probably going to be one of the most valuable cards in this set also so definitely need a play set of these girls next i got a play set of other nami this is the nami from the starter deck she's pay one and then activate main once per turn you can choose one of your rested dawn and add it to a character card or leader card so what's really good about her is once you're tapping out you can still get your leader effect by adding a rested dawn onto your leader to get the skill to increase all your character cards by plus 1000 and that nami is especially good with zoro zoro is a really really strong card so i think he's a four of in the deck it just three cost gets rush you can attack the turn he play it and just really really good card so basically if you play your nami that gives you the rested dawn effect on turn one on two you can play zoro and then you can put that rested dawn on zoro to make your leader a 6k which will also make this card a 6k so synergizes really well with the other namis the first nami can search it out and the other nami is going to help get extra value out of the zoro I'm running three choppers just because I only have three of the meet the one piece promo choppers, but I, I actually don't think you really need four. Chopper's an amazing card, really, really good card. I mean to downplay it, but there's so much stuff that searches in this deck and there's no counter power on chopper. So a lot of times I actually want to see counter power to keep stuff alive or defend myself. Um, whereas chopper is going to be an offensive play where you're playing it and then you're using it to block. T chops, he's a good guy. He always looks out for his crew. You know, he's always taking care of his crew. So it's good to pay one and get out of attack basically. I'm playing three Usopp. I think Usopp is a really good card. It just makes your opponent play weird. A lot of cards do play event cards, and if Usopp is on board on your turn, whenever your opponent plays an event card, you get to draw a card. And at worst, he's a 2k counter. So it forces your opponent to play kind of strangely around the stuff that you're doing. If they're planning to counter with an event card, they're not really going to be able to do that. And then if they don't do that that turn, then you can just swing with Usopp because when he has a Dawn on him plus your leader effect, he's going to be a base 5k, which makes him a viable threat. If you trigger two years in Sabadi Archipelago, you can search an Usopp and that gives you 2k counter power for another swing if there's another one coming in. So 2k counter power is always good. And something that draws you cards is also good. So I think Usopp's a really good card. I'm playing four of the Sanji's. Sanji is a really good card in this deck. One, because he's a 2k counter, which is amazing, but he basically becomes an 8k by taking one life. So really, really powerful, big swing. That's good for removing stuff and also just for kind of sealing the deal on some pressure. So between the leader skill and Sanji's effect, he's gonna be 8K, which is a big, big threat to deal with. And it's a great looking card, so don't mind having shiny, beautiful pieces of cardboard in my hand. I'm playing three of the SR Luffy. I was actually sleeping on this card. This card is really good. It just helps you build pressure over the course of the game. So you're just playing it for two. And then the next turn, you're going to be able to play stuff and get a swing out of this thing by using the Rested Dawn effect. You can take Rested Dawn and add them to him two per turn. So he's pretty strong. The not getting KO'd skill isn't that viable because people can just swing into him with leaders and leaders are going to be 5k. He's a 3k. So he can definitely get KO'd. But that investment on the following turns makes him really strong. I actually like the SR art a lot, but I had three of the alt arts. So I figured I'd throw them in here. I'm playing three of the starter Sanji. This is good late game because late game, you can just pay two, put two Dawn on him and then use your leader effect. And he's gonna become a 7K rush, which is really, really strong. But I'm running three because no counter power. So I'd rather run four of cards with counter power. 
but very, very good card, especially if an Nami on board, you're even gonna get more value out of this guy. I'm running four Robin. Robin is an amazingly strong card. Just removal is so good, and especially being able to remove searchers and not having to waste a swing into them. So Robin can just Dawn X1 swing and KO something 3K power or less, especially in synergy with Otama. There's a lot of good 5K power cards, so you can play Otama, get it down to three, and then swing with Robin and clear it off the board or just any of the searchers or you know small blockers, she's gonna take care of all of them. So really, really strong card for removal. I think four is really good. I'm playing three of the starter Luffy's. This card's amazing. Uh, the only reason I'm not playing four is because it doesn't have counter power and everything in this deck is searchable. So you'll probably see it when you need it. And you're probably not gonna drop more than one or two of these guys. I've never really dropped three within a game. Maybe it's possible, but if I'm not playing three, then I'm not gonna play four in the deck, so. I think three is fine and again you have six things that search so you're likely to see him because you're going to be looking through most of your deck i'm playing three red hawk i think red hawk is really good for the removal also um, you're getting 4k counter power and you're getting to remove something 4k power or less so any pesky blockers searchers anything like that you're just going to get them right off the board with red hawk so really really strong card and if you trigger it, you can give something minus 10,000 power for the turn, which is also pretty strong. But I think the removal is really, really valuable. I'm playing two of the two years in the Sabadee Archipelago. This card is great because you can trigger it and search something specific. Um, it's also just basically the same as Nami. You pay one search top five. But I think having the trigger on this also as an option is what makes this card really playable. And I think six searchers for the deck allows you to see through the majority of your deck in a game. So I fine with six i'm playing two diable jambe diable jambe is just a great card yeah if you don't have your luffy that can't be blocked you can just put this on whatever card if you want to swing through a blocker if they have a blocker and you want to swing through for lethal or whatever it is this card just makes swings go through especially if they're trying to protect a character card and they have a blocker out you just diable jambe and you can swing right into that character card so they won't be able to defend it with a blocker so very very good card and then of course I'm playing four Otama. I think Otama is just one of the best cards in the game in terms of value. She costs one minus something 2K power and she synergizes with so many different things in the deck. So you really get a lot of value off her with Robin. If you get something down to 3K with Otama, then you can swing with Robin and KO it. It also synergizes really well with Jet Pistol. If you're trying to get rid of like a kid or a big body, you get, you know, she's gonna neg it by two. So anything 8K becomes in range of Jet Pistol with one of her. Or if it's in 10k, two of her and a jet pistol bring it in range of KO. So really, really strong card and a 2k counter. So 2k counters are, you know how I feel about those. And then of course for jet pistol. Jet pistol is just such a good card. The fact that you can trigger this off life and KO something 6k power or less is just really, really strong. And uh, there's removal is just so necessary in this game. So I think four jet pistols is really good, especially with Otama. I think it's an amazing, amazing card. Anyway, that's the deck profile. This is mainly just turn stuff sideways and swing and search out your straw hats and have some fun. And when things get hot and heavy, you just awaken your leader to the other side, which is really fun to do. So I recommend giving that a try. I hope you guys enjoy this deck profile. I had a lot of fun putting it together. It's super shiny and you know, I love super, super shiny cards. So I'm definitely gonna be having some fun with this deck. I'm excited to play it against some of the different stuff and see how it pans out. And I will update the list eventually if I think it needs updating, but let me know what you guys are running this is definitely not like the absolute best list there's a lot of lists out there a lot more consistent lists if you look at the uh, facebook group and see some of those lists over there this is just what i'm having fun with and feel free to try it out from here and make your own adjustments to it to make it the best version that you want to play for yourself i'm a dentist i can't end without doing a dental tooth tip my dental tooth tip would be do not carry swords in your mouth it would be very bad for your teeth really not great to hold stuff between your teeth in general somehow zoro can get away with it but it might end up costing you a lot of time money and frustration so don't do it thank you so much and i'll see you guys next time